Venus, one of the most fascinating and dangerous planets in our solar system. It's filled with scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and acid rain. But despite these dangers, some people think it might be a better planet for humans to settle on than Mars. But why? And would a human settlement on Venus even be possible? Sit back as we take you on a 10,000-day journey of how humanity could populate this planet. Yeah, maybe. Day 1 Okay, okay, not so fast. Before you set foot on Venus, we're going to have to run some extensive tests and gather more information about this planet. First, we'll need to launch robotic missions and map it out and collect information about the environment. Luckily, we already have a bit of a head start on this. Since 1961, spacecraft have been flying by and profiling Venus. These missions measured things like the topography, atmospheric pressure, and the overall conditions of the planet. But there's still a lot to learn about the Venusian surface. It's been 30 years since the U.S. has gone to Venus with a mission. That's Noam Eisenberg. He works for the Venus Exploration Analysis Group, a NASA community whose goal is to keep people updated on new information about Venus. In the 2020s and 2030s, Noam will be part of a satellite mission to Venus to help us understand and see more of the planet than ever before. But today, Noam's going to help us determine whether or not colonizing Venus is a good idea. You have to wear one, one or the other of several different science fiction hats in order to make this happen. Okay, let's put our hypothetical science fiction hats to the test and get started. Day 500. We've been trying to colonize Venus for a little over a year now, and the results have been, well... There's been a bit of trial and error going on with our astronauts. They keep going out to explore the surface of Venus, but keep dying. Why? Today, I want to share a tool that we here at What If find incredibly useful, Surfshark VPN. Have you ever had the frustration of not being able to watch a movie or a show you like because of regional restrictions? Well, with Surfshark VPN, that problem is a thing of the past. You can explore the globe and unlock resources on platforms like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, and more. Moreover, if you're like me, you often use public Wi-Fi in coffee shops or airports and you're concerned about your online security. Well, Surfshark VPN encrypts your connection, ensuring you stay safe in any network environment. What gives me peace of mind is that Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. This means you can try it out and if it doesn't suit you, you can get a full refund. No risks involved. If you want to enhance your online experience and address security concerns, consider Surfshark VPN. You can get it through the following link, surfshark.deals slash whatifchinese. Enter the promo code whatifchinese and you'll immediately enjoy a three-month free offer. Give it a try now. So it's, it's not clear that if you were immediately transported there, whether you would burn to death or crush to death first, but certainly both of those things would happen before you asphyxiated in the carbon dioxide atmosphere. Right. Well, we probably should have listened to Noam a bit closer because it turns out the Venusian surface is incredibly dangerous. Three reasons why. Venus has one of the hottest surface temperatures of any planet, even Mercury. The surface temperatures reach 467 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt lead. Or some unsuspecting astronauts. But let's say we somehow manage to build super heat-resistant astronaut suits. Well, you'd still be met with incredible pressure. The atmospheric pressure on Venus is equivalent to what you'd experience at a depth of 900 meters underwater. This would instantly crush any astronaut. It would also crush and destroy your spaceship as you land. Yeah, and if you manage to avoid all that, which you won't, but let's say you do, you'll also have to deal with a corrosive atmosphere and acid rain. These conditions are powerful enough to destroy your equipment and 
eventually melt your skin. Hmm, okay, I don't think this is gonna work out. Let's jump ahead and try to terraform Venus to make it more like Earth. Day 1000. So, we've been attempting to terraform Venus, and it's been a pretty tricky process. The first problem we'd need to solve would be the atmosphere. To make it similar to what we have on Earth, we'd need to eliminate the carbon dioxide and sulfuric clouds. In theory, we could introduce genetically engineered microorganisms that absorb carbon dioxide. But then there's the scorching temperature on Venus. Now, solving this could be done in multiple ways. One of them involves setting up solar shades in space. This would redirect the sun's rays so they don't hit Venus, which would reduce the solar radiation and cool the planet over time. This all sounds wicked cool from a science fiction perspective, but realistically, we're a couple hundred or thousands of years too early for any of this to be possible. Okay, this is really complicated. Noam, any ideas? The only way we could inhabit the surface of Venus is if we changed Venus to be much more Earth-like than it is. And right now, we don't have that technology. We don't have that ability. We don't have the resources. If we could terraform Venus, it'd be much, much easier to sort of re-terraform Earth and undo all the damage we've done here. And, and I don't even know how you would go about doing that. Think about that as science fiction, you know, science fantasy method, right? Okay, sounds like we should switch our tactics. If humans were to live on Venus, well, it technically couldn't be on the surface. That would just cost too much money, time, and technology that's not available yet. Maybe it's not about living on the surface, but instead living right above it. Let's fast forward. Day 2500. Okay, after years of experimentation, we've finally found the answer about how to live on Venus. I think. The new plan is to create a cloud city 50 kilometers above Venus's surface. Arguably, this could be one of the most comfortable places for humans to exist in our solar system, besides Earth. That uh, altitude in the Venus atmosphere is kind of actually the most Earth-like any other place in the solar system is. So in that altitude, the temperature is around, depending on where you are, is somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius, so it could be shirt sleeve weather. The atmospheric pressure is around one bar, half to one bar. So up here in the clouds, it would feel like a nice summer day, and the atmospheric pressure wouldn't crush you. Sounds good to me. But what would you live in, exactly? Well, we'd create blimps made of Teflon that could be suspended in the clouds. Each blimp could have a different purpose and have different groups of people within it, all connected with covered bridges so you can travel from one end to the other. We'd also be protected from any harmful solar radiation due to Venus's thick atmosphere. That's something Mars can't provide. But despite us making significant progress, these cloud cities wouldn't be without their shortcomings. Day 5000. Okay, we've been expanding and living in these cloud colonies for over six years now. We should also mention that you and your space colleagues have been working a ton. Hey, we never said building a new population on an entirely different planet would be easy. If you're going to be one of the people in charge of colonizing Venus, you can expect non-stop work days. From researching the planet to just setting things up for your daily life and survival. You'd need to build cloud ships that can provide food through hydroponic gardening and solar paneled ships that can provide power. This would require an incredible amount of skill and resources. And oops, I forgot to mention another extremely dangerous thing that you need to be aware of. That's the sulfuric acid clouds. They're going to be tricky to avoid, even being 50 kilometers above the surface. Remember, these things are hazardous and could easily melt your skin. Now, not all areas in this cloud city would have these clouds, luckily. But if you are living in an area where that sulfuric acid is there, then you have, you know, you're talking about a Kevlar envelope, you're talking about things that you need much more protection from, even if temperature pressure is not the major concern. 
And the problems might get even worse as we progress to our next phase in populating Venus. Day 10,000. Okay, we've been populating Venus for nearly 30 years now. Hundreds of astronauts have come and gone. Some have even started having children, creating new generations of native Venusians. You've kept busy maintaining and building these cloud ships while learning more about the planet. But over the decades you've been here, life hasn't been nearly as exciting as you thought it might be. You spend most of your time in this yellow haze. Maybe you get to see some sky and stuff like that. So not necessarily the most uh, romantic or inspirational location. So uh, you're living in a, a box and most of your view of the surface will be through, you know, automated ports and stuff like that. And thanks to the acid clouds, it's likely you wouldn't be able to spend much time outside either. Not the most comfortable environment to live in, in either the atmosphere or the surface. Hmm, living in these cloud ships doesn't sound all that great. Sure, you'd be creating a new world for humans to live in, but it wouldn't be much exploring. It would just be going from ship to ship, maintaining them, and getting to research a surface that's 50 kilometers below you. It sounds like a tiring and somewhat sad existence. Would it be worth it? So for like permanent habitation in or on or around Venus, I don't think will happen. I don't think it should happen. But that doesn't mean our hopes for humans becoming an interstellar civilization are misguided. But I do think that permanent habitation outside of Earth both should and will happen. I, I believe that, you know, in the long term, multi-century long term, getting all the eggs out of the one basket, getting all the humans off of Earth is what we need to do as a species in order to ensure our, you know, in perpetuity survival. So maybe populating Venus isn't the best idea. After all, it's impractical, in many ways impossible, and seems like a sad existence for humans anyway. Want to suggest what planet we go to next? Maybe one of you will suggest living on Mars to see how that goes. But that sounds like a story for another What If.